I'm going to go over some op amp noise testing that I did many years ago and then just recently. This is the setup for testing op amp noise that I'm going to use. It'll be a gain of 101 actually, the 10k source resistor and 100k feedback resistor. I'm going to use plus and minus 15 volt as the supply rails and a 3555B noise test set which will be running off battery just to keep the noise as low as possible in the whole circuit. This is the 3555B test set I'm going to be using to measure the op amp noise. I'll be using the 15 kilohertz flat curve so it'll be a very wide band noise that we're going to be measuring here. This test set is really nice for measuring noise in audio circuits. It'll do all of these filter for frequency response, 3 kilohertz flat. I'm going to be using the 15 kilohertz flat, C message, and program. And these are the frequency bands that each test will perform. This 15 kilohertz flat, if you look at the graph, it's around 3 dB down at 20 hertz and 3 dB down at 15 kilohertz. So this entire band is going to be the noise band I'm going to look at with these op amps at a gain of 100 or 101. I ran this test way back in the 80s when I was evaluating op amps. I have many of the prototypes left from those days working with Motorola. We developed some low noise, lower current op amps. Originally the 5532 was one of the best low noise at the time, but it, it just had too much idle current for some of the application. We worked with Motorola to develop a new op amp that would also work well in telecom installations where battery power is or was at least back in the day was a must. These are some of the original prototypes from Motorola for the 33079 quad low noise op amp. And these are original prototypes from the 33179, which I think is now discontinued, and they went with the one, the 078 and 079. Also has some 33178 here, original protos. In fact, these here are, don't even have labels on them. They just have test numbers for test data. So the PC is a prototype, and so is XC is a prototype. These XCs were the first, see date code 88, and then the second set of prototypes was the PC in 89. So this was all under development at that time. Going to start with the 1458, which is a dual 741, one of the very first op amps around. No spec for noise on this IC. This is an enhanced version of the 1458 called the 4558. So I'm going to run some noise tests on this. There are no noise specs for this IC either. So TLO62 IC I'm going to test. This is a JFET input stage op amp, very low power, 200 microamps per section. Not recommended for audio. Very noisy. It's not even spec for noise. TL072 I'm going to test. People in the past have called this a low noise IC. They do spec the noise, but it's very high at 18 nanovolts per square root hertz. But it is a JFET input. It's been around for a long, long time. The TL082, it's another JFET input. There also is no noise spec. The 
the LS204 from ST Micro. Back in the 80s, it was a fairly decent op amp, and it does have a noise spec. Looks like around 12 nanovert volts per square root hertz. Here's the RC4560, dual audio operational amplifier, goes back to the 80s. It says suitable for audio applications. Okay, they spec their noise, microvolts RMS. But we'll run some tests on that and see how it matches up to other op amps. This is the OPA, 1662 is the dual, and then there's a 1664 quad. This one has excellent noise specs. The noise, 3.3 nanovolts, square root hertz at a kilohertz. Very low distortion, and rail-to-rail output. Not available, though, in any dip form. It's only available in surface mount. And lots of noise specifications here. So this, this one would be good for audio. Here's some of the noise figures here. I usually go by this one, and this is 3.3, which is very low. So this is a very good op amp to use for audio applications. MC. 33, 178, and 179. I worked with Motorola back in the 80s with this chip and the 33078 and 079. I used uh, these in a preamp back then. I um, had engineering samples actually that I used in the preamp from this IC. This particular one drives 600 ohms. I think it's been discontinued though, and they, they went with the 070. 8 and 079. They originally had both. These have noise figures of 7.5 nanovolts per square root hertz. And if you're interested in a noise current, 0.15 picoamps square root hertz. So it's fair. I believe the, uh, the 079 is much better. This is the MC3307879. Back in the 80s, I worked with Motorola to develop this chip for our industry, which was telecom. We needed something lower power but low noise, and all that was available at the time, the lowest noise was the 5532, which I'm going to test later on. But this has a, a noise of a uh, spec of 4.5 nanovolt square root hertz. So this one is really good for audio. It will drive 600 ohms, and it's got a 4.5 nanovolt square root hertz noise figure here, which at the time was, was very good. And it does stand up to even some of the newer amps that are out there as far as noise is concerned. This is the NE5532 for audio circuits back in the 80s and 90s was considered one of the best. It drives 600 ohms. It's got a 5 nanovolt per square root hertz typical noise figure. And it's designed for high quality and professional audio equipment. It's been used in a lot of sound boards and so on. Here's some of the noise figures. At 1 kilohertz it's five nanovolt per square root hertz. So for back in the 1980s, this was a very good chip for noise. One of the issues with the 5532 was the amount of power dissipation. The chip did draw a lot of current. It's one watt here. In telecom, that was way too much. That's why we worked with Motorola to develop the 
33078 and 079 to give the good noise figures but much lower current. This is the LM833, which was also out in the 80s. This one had excellent noise also at 4.5 nanovolts per square root hertz. And this worked well, very well in audio applications. The power dissipation was half that of the 5532. This is half a watt power dissipation, which still is, was quite a bit over what 33078 was capable of much lower power. So again, it's 4.5 nanovolts per square root hertz noise figure. Here's some test data I took back in the 1980s of various op amps that were available at the time. This is the test setup. These are chosen metal film resistors, uh, low noise selected, using the 3555B noise test set. We did synth, some single op amps and some dual op amps and also quad op amps. And I also took offset, and this is with a gain of 101, actually. Noise, like I just showed on the 15 kilohertz flat setting. So basically wideband noise for audio. These numbers taken back in the 80s, and then I retook them on some of the ICs just a few moments ago. All these numbers seem to come out the same so many years later. And I was looking at some of the worst. TL062 is probably one of the worst for noise that I see here. Some of the best would be the 5532 and the LM833, which come out about the same. And way down here was the one of the prototype chips, the MC34079, which they later changed it to a 33079. As you can see, the, the noise for that op amp is right in there with the 5532 and the LM833. These XMCs were prototypes chips at the time for Motorola. They weren't for audio, they were for other purposes. It, and the noise is terrible on those. There's the LS404. 4156 we used a lot of, and its noise was mid 70s. But what surprised me was the TL074 and, or the TL. It's actually TL0, TL072. That noise was pretty bad because I've seen that IC used as a low noise IC, and it definitely is not. I mean, it's lower noise than the TL062, but it's not very good. So anyway, this is just a look at some of the data taken back in 1986 of some of the op amps that were available at the time. I'm gonna go through a few op amps that are still available. This is the 5532. It has a noise rating of around 5 nanovolts per square root hertz at 1 kilohertz. The 5532 is still available. This is a DigiKey website. And there are 41 cents for the SOIC. And the DIP looks like it's still available too. But you have to get it through Marketplace. So it looks like the DIPs are going to be discontinued. They've been discontinuing a lot of the DIP ICs. The 3307879, which is 4.5 nanovolt square root hertz, and the spec does show that at 1 kilohertz. Still available in SOIC. They're only 58 cents a piece. I still use those mainly for audio. And it looks like the dip is still available, still active, so you can get the dip. The LM833, which is another one at 4.5 nanovolt for square root hertz. The LM833 is still available, and they're as low as 32 cents a piece. The 4562, a very good audio op amp. It has a noise of 2.7 nanovolt per square root hertz. Nice 
op amp for low noise, but I'm afraid the price is <laughs> the price is out of this world at six dollars ninety three cents, and the dip actually costs less than the SOIC, which is usually the other way around. But they are available, but very very expensive. This is a low voltage op amp. These seem to be hard to find in low noise. This is the lowest noise one I've found so far for a low voltage battery power type op amp. And this one is at four nanovolts per square root hertz. So this is pretty good for portable equipment. It was available in several package size. Of course, down here, the dip, obsolete. You can't get the dip anymore, but you can get pretty much everything else here in 8SO. I see, or a TSOP. So they're a buck eighty-five, or a dollar thirty-six for the SOIC. So they're not too bad, and they are a low voltage, rail to rail. And then we get into the high performance, Sound Plus series op amps, ultra low noise, two point five nanovolts per square root hertz, and very very low harmonic distortion. The OPA sixteen oh two is available. Two dollars and seventy-eight cents. This looks like just the small VSOP or the eight SOIC is available in that one. No dip. And another Sound Plus. This is a three point three nanovolt square root hertz at one kilohertz. Very very low distortion. Available for a dollar eighty-two VSOP and dollar ninety in the SOIC. This is a quick look at some of the op amp packaging that took place over the years like this is one of the first date code 1974 this is a RCA CA741T metal package and as time went on they went to the dip package here which is ceramic and then the plastic package and these are all the leaded parts that are going away nowadays and now we're going into surface mount. In order to prototype with surface mount, sometimes you have to build these little adapters so you can plug them into a to your prototype board. So I had to make up one of these conversion boards that you can put leads in and cut these out and put different surface mount ICs so they can be plugged into a proto board. So back in the day it was earlier it was always easy to build prototype circuits with the old style dip packages, but now everything surface mounts. In order to make the prototypes now, you have to do some converting with the chips. So they'll plug on. I had to build quite a few of these converter packages. I've got all kinds of them in the drawer here that we just kind of use for prototyping.